My name is Tony Van Veen, CEO of Dismakers. Welcome to part two of our two-part series on tracking the return on your artist marketing investment. If you haven't watched part one yet, please check that out first. There's a link in the description below the video. Now in the first video, I listed the four things you need in order to generate an ROI for your music marketing. You need a qualified audience, a way to track your results, you need something people want, and you need time, patience, and persistence. Now, I discussed the qualified audience and way to track your results last time. Today, I will risk making myself unpopular by discussing the remaining two points, starting with the fact that in order to get a marketing ROI, you need to have something that people want. That's right. Now, some artists might not like to hear this, but for your marketing to work, the qualified audience that we described last week must believe that the product being marketed is something they actually want. In other words, it must address a need they have or be something that entertains them or, in the case of music, causes them pleasure. History is full of heavily marketed products that failed because the market didn't want them. You remember New Coke from way back in the day? or any of the recent iterations of YouTube's music subscription streaming service. Now note, I'm not talking about the regular old video YouTube here. Turns out that nobody wanted a new kind of Coke or a YouTube music streaming service. Old Coke and old YouTube were plenty good enough. Now, somehow when I hear artists complain that, for example, their distributor didn't push them enough and that's why they aren't selling, they never seem to have asked themselves if their music was actually good enough to get the market excited. So I'm asking you, actually, I am pleading with you to take a look in the mirror and be absolutely honest. Is your music so good that someone who hears it at a concert, in a YouTube video, or a stream, or an ad, that they will want to hear the whole song and listen to it again, and maybe listen to more of your songs, and be willing to visit your website or your Spotify profile to get it. That's how good you need to be if you want your music to go viral. And I'm sorry to say, many artists today love their own music, but they're not particularly realistic about how good their music actually is. All right. So while I'm dropping these hard to hear truth bombs, let me double down on this. Because in general, realism is not something that artists tend to be very good at, period. I know that I wasn't back in the dinosaur era when I was writing and recording and performing. Why? Because artists love making music. They love writing, they love recording. It's their baby. So how could they not love it? But just because you love your baby doesn't mean it's automatically a beautiful baby or that that baby will grow up to play basketball like LeBron or write songs like John Lennon. So when an artist says to me, you know, I tried marketing and it didn't work, I always think she may be right or it could be that she just can't measure it or maybe she's just not quite good enough for the audience to like her enough to click on that ad. Now, I'm sure you don't particularly like hearing this, or you may think, he's not talking about me, and I probably am not. I'm not trying to put anyone down here, but I am a bit of a pragmatist and a realist, and the fact is some artists, probably not you, but some artists just aren't that good. The good news is that every artist can get better with time and effort. But that's a topic for a different video. Suffice it to say that for purposes of today's discussion, your music and your recording need to be on point enough that your target audience can get excited about it and want to hear more. Now, okay, the last thing that you need to drive an ROI from your marketing investment is time, patience, and persistence. Let me start by telling you a little secret. If you believe that a potential fan will see your ad and click on it, you are quite mistaken. It almost never happens that someone sees an ad for the first time 
and clicks on it right away. I mean, think about your own online behavior. How often have you clicked on an ad the first time you saw it online? I mean, I know I've done it on occasion, and you may have as well, but it's happened only a tiny percentage of the ads that I see. Any marketing professional will probably tell you that it takes at least seven marketing impressions before a suspect will take an action in response to a marketing activity. They need to see your ad at least seven times before they click on it. What does that mean? It means you always need to be marketing. It doesn't all have to be paid advertising, though you'll probably want to spend some marketing money most of the time. But it can be free social posts, it could be boosted posts, it could be email newsletter impressions, flyers posted on a wall. You catch my drift. And to get those seven impressions, you need time. They're not gonna all happen within the first two days or two weeks. I mean, even after someone clicks on your ad once, it doesn't mean they already subscribed to your YouTube channel or they liked you on Spotify yet. So you need to keep marketing to stay in front of a potential fan so that they can catch your message that your new single just came out. In other words, you have to constantly be working your magic. Now, does that sound exhausting or too much work for you? I mean, that's perfectly fine. But then reset your goals and play music just for the sheer joy of playing and recording and performing. I mean, that in itself is incredibly rewarding. But if you have bigger aspirations for your music career, then you need to be prepared to work to market yourself and your music. Period. End of sentence. Now, most artists just don't do enough marketing. And most artists who do market don't run their campaigns long enough. There is no way you'll get an ROI from a two-week marketing campaign. No way! When an artist runs a campaign for two or three or four weeks and they don't feel like they are getting a positive ROI right away, and let's forget for now that they're probably not really able to accurately track the results anyway, then if they don't get a positive ROI right away, they tend to get disillusioned and say, marketing doesn't work. And that's a real shame because the fact is that marketing does work. It just takes time. And so many artists give up. And some of them probably give up just before the point where they might get their breakthrough. It takes time, it takes patience and persistence to build a career as an artist. And you don't want to give up too soon. So back to the original question, what about that marketing ROI? Turns out it's a much more complicated story than anyone thought, isn't it? I mean, here's what we found so far. We need a qualified target audience, and that nowadays with you know, social media is not actually that hard, though it does take a bit of work. We need to track our results across Facebook and Google and Spotify and Bandcamp, another half a dozen sites. And that is hard at best, and for most of us, could be almost impossible to do all of it. Then you need to have something that the audience actually wants. Your music has to be good enough to stop someone from scrolling through their social feed and get them to click on your ad. And finally, you need time, patience, and perseverance, and some commensurate budget to get enough marketing impressions so that someone, be, someone will actually take a desired action. What I know is this, to grow your career as an artist, you need to invest, especially early on in your artist career. You've made many other investments that probably haven't paid for themselves yet. Buying your instrument, paying for rehearsal space, recording, paying for distribution, making CDs. You have to make a similar investment in building your brand early in your career. It's called an investment because you put your time and your money and your effort in now and you hope for a return at some point in the future. Now, before I wrap up this series on marketing ROI, remember this. ROI can be measured in so many more soft ways 
beyond just the dollars and cents of streaming revenues and CD and ticket sales. There is actual value in name recognition, in those listens to your ad, in, and in exposure from potential fans just seeing your name out there that could pay off at some point in the future, but you may not be able to track it. It's just that the ROI from that investment in marketing can come sometimes years after you make the investment if you hang in there long enough. I hope you found this helpful. I look forward to seeing you next time.